So, those unfamiliar with how hotels work, it's generally three eight-hour shifts. I work the overnight shift, the graveyard. I've been here for nearly six years now, and I will tell you the same thing I tell new hires. I've seen some shit, some weird, wild shit. A good rule of thumb is when something weird happens, keep your head down and leave it alone. This, of course, leads each of us to have stories to tell. Now before you start thinking of a creepy old haunted hotel, I want to dispel that. I work for one of the biggest names in the world, in a relatively new hotel. It's about 15 years old, and not haunted, probably. I suppose dumping one of the best stories first is the way to go. So, the 13th floor it is. So, way back when I was in training. Two days to make sure you understand how to click a few buttons was the first time I heard about it. You're going to want to stay off the 13th floor, bro. My trainer, a guy in his 30s, Derek, who looked like he survived solely on energy drinks, had told me. I, of course, looked at him like he was the biggest idiot alive, but he stared back at me stoically. I may not remember Jack's shit from training, but I'll never forget the seriousness in that look. See, the thing is, my hotel has three floors, not counting the thirteenth. I brushed it off at the time as nonsense, not yet being experienced in the hotel's weirdness. Derek just shrugged and went about his explanation. Take the elevator, he said. The elevator never lands on the 13th. The stairs will though. Sometimes if you're going up, sometimes if you're going down. He finished, handing me a bundle of receipts. We offer an express checkout, where we slip your receipt under your door so you can bounce at your own convenience. Derek never brought up the 13th floor, or any of the other weird occurrences, though it would have been nice for him to warn me about the vending machine at the end of the hall. In any case, after training I never saw him again. I heard he moved to Alaska or something. Since then, I have been completely on my own, five nights a week. Save for, when I myself get a new little bird to teach. They usually don't last too long. I remember it was my first week alone, when my first 13th floor related incident occurred. Nothing dramatic or anything. I had heard the sound of rubbing metal, followed by a wet, plop sound. I'd been fucking around with a sketch at the front desk. When this happened, I recognized the sound immediately as the laundry chute, and the housekeeper had locked the chutes hours before I had even arrived. Four hours before. Our front desk is connected to the laundry room, so with my curiosity aroused, I stepped around the wall where I could see the chute opening, laying there, half pouring over the edge like a lolling tongue, was a large towel covered in some brown stains. Could have been old blood, could have been shit, could have been the number of things. People are generally disgusting. I turned and brought my eyes to the computer monitor that housed the camera feeds. Nine smaller screens embedded in a large one. Recording kicks in if they spot any movement. And I have to admit, I wasn't surprised to see none were recording. Now, this was, like I said, almost six years ago. So I can't remember for sure what I did. But knowing me, I probably ignored it. And not my job attitude. I know, it sounds dickish but they don't pay me that much. 
I do remember checking the back a few hours later, only to find the towel had vanished. Again, I kept to myself. I thought maybe my brain was adapting to night shift and was fucking with me. I don't drink energy drinks or coffee, so staying awake was a battle of sheer will back in those days. That was the first time that had happened. It has happened many, many times since then. And not always a towel, oh no. It happens a few times a week, at least. Some of my favorite items to come down have been a dog leash, eyeglasses, and, get this, a full chess set, one piece at a time. Those are a few interesting trinkets. Most of the time, it is hotel stuff, towels, blankets, pillows. Sometimes they have the brown stains, sometimes a bright red coat that most definitely is blood. They always disappear without a trace after a few hours of sitting there. So that's the laundry chute, one of the few 13th floor events. Another is the camera system. We have three set up on each floor. Row one covers the first floor, pool area, and front desk. I can always look up and get a reminder that my boss doesn't completely trust me with the 300 bucks in the drawer. Row two shows, well, floor two, and the stairwell. Row three shows the same for the third floor. This is what is shown 99% of the time, but on the rare occasion, all nine will switch to static for a second and clear to show a dark hallway lit only by faint lights at each end. Every door on the floor stands wide open. I've never been able to make out anything else due to the awful lighting and even worse quality of the cameras. They switch back after exactly two seconds anyway. Another thing that happens much less often is a phone call. The ringer says it comes from within the hotel, but the room ID stays completely blank. I don't answer these anymore, but I did before. It was always the same. An old man, apparently residing in room 1302, which we of course do not have, croaking out that he can't get the weird guy off the TV and asking if I could come fix it for him. He would then do a baby doll giggle and hang up. It was my second year that I actually managed to land on the 13th floor, which is not nearly easy. That year, I happened to be on a fitness kick and I had opted to take the stairs instead of the elevator. I know what you're all thinking, but Derek's warning had been two years prior and the weirdness of this hotel had become so routine that I honestly didn't even think about what he said about the stairs. Not to mention that I had been taking them for months without incident. Up to this point, I had finished delivering receipts on the third floor and began my descent. I arrived at the ground floor and pushed open the door to reveal a darkened hallway resembling the second and third floor, except instead of our shitty floral pattern wallpaper, the walls were lined with newspaper. It was too dark and I was too confused to attempt to read what they said. I turned around only to see the door previously leading to the stairs now only mirrored the dark hallway. Nervously, I slowly took the steps toward the center, where the elevator was located. I could hear a constant sound of wind rushing through the entire floor, but I felt nothing as I reached out to press the down arrow. It lit up after my input, but simultaneously I heard every door, infinite doors creaking open. I felt the wind now licking my face as if I stood atop a skyscraper. I turned and glared into the room directly across the elevator. 
pressing my back into the cold metal door. Inside, I saw that the window was open, curtains that didn't match my hotel's brand billowing in the strong wind, lit by the glow of the TV. The man on the TV stared back at me, and I saw that he was no man at all, but rather a wooden puppet. His square jaw and lipless mouth seemed to have a permanent, sinister smile fixed on it. His black eyes, lifeless, rolled to the left side of its face to make up the angle the television was sitting at. His red, swirly hair, freckles, the suit he wore, and the desk he sat upon reminded me of a twisted, demented puppet version of Conan O'Brien. He darted his eyes to the bed in the center of the room, as if to say, Hey, look at this, before returning his gaze to me and rapidly raising and lowering his wooden eyebrows. On the bed, under the blanket, I could see a lump, vaguely shaped like a human. And to make matters worse, it was beginning to stir. Just as the thing in the bed sat upright, the blanket still covering it completely. The elevator pinged, and I stumbled backward into it. I flailed my hand to the button reading one, and I pressed that fucker at least ten million times. Just as the elevator door was closing, I gave the puppet one more look. He shot me a wink, just as a huge, humanoid silhouette stepped into the door frame. I couldn't see more as the elevator had closed a nanosecond later and began a descent that took so much longer than it ever had. I fully expected it to open back up to the 13th floor where that thing would grab me, but it didn't. I finally reached the first floor and it was the same first floor as it had always been. I've made it absolutely crucial that I take the elevator every single time I have to go upstairs now. That's the story of the 13th floor. We occasionally have guests disappear, their stuff still in their rooms, when the checkout time comes. I think all of the employees know. We just don't talk about it. So, feels good to get this off my chest. I may be back to share some of the other weird things that go on here. But I'm gonna go for now, though. Something just came down the chute, and it sounded big. <laughs>